Have you ever pondered what would happen if you met your antimatter self? Antimatter, a term that often pops up in the realm of science fiction, is not just a figment of an imaginative mind. It's a very real, albeit mysterious, aspect of our universe. In the simplest of terms, antimatter is the mirror image of matter. For every particle of matter there's an antiparticle which is identical in mass but opposite in charge. Now why does antimatter matter? Well, it's not just because it has an intriguing name. Antimatter has the potential to unlock the secrets of our universe. It's believed to have been created in equal amounts with matter during the Big Bang. But here's the catch. Almost all of the universe we observe today is matter. So where did all the antimatter go? This is one of the greatest mysteries in modern physics. There's also a peculiar characteristic of antimatter that makes it stand out. When a particle of matter comes into contact with its antimatter counterpart, they annihilate each other. That's right, they disappear in a flash of energy. This phenomenon, known as annihilation, is as intriguing as it is perplexing. It's like meeting your twin, but instead of a warm hug, you both vanish into thin air. But don't worry, the chances of you bumping into your antimatter self are next to none. Antimatter is incredibly rare and difficult to produce. Even if it were abundant, our matter-filled world would make it disappear before we could observe it. So, to sum it all up, antimatter is the elusive doppelganger of matter, with the ability to disappear in a burst of energy when it meets its twin. It's a key player in the cosmic drama, holding the potential to unravel the secrets of the universe, and yet it remains largely hidden from our view. Imagine a world where meeting your counterpart could lead to total annihilation. It all began with a cloud chamber and a cosmic ray shower. In the early 30s, Carl D. Anderson, a young physicist, was working diligently with a cloud chamber, a sealed environment filled with supersaturated vapor. This chamber was a popular tool among physicists, used to detect particles of ionizing radiation. Anderson was using it to study the tracks left by cosmic rays, high-energy particles from outer space that shower our planet. As Anderson scrutinized the tracks, he noticed something peculiar. A particle had left a track similar to an electron's, but with a significant difference, it curved in the opposite direction in the magnetic field of the chamber. This was baffling because, according to the known laws of physics, no particle should behave this way. It was as if this particle was an electron with a positive charge, something unheard of in the world of physics. This unexpected discovery left Anderson perplexed and excited. He had stumbled upon a particle that simply didn't fit into the established understanding of matter. It was a bold claim, but the evidence was irrefutable. Anderson had found a particle that mirrored an electron but was positively charged, a particle that was matter's opposite. He called it a positron, marking the discovery of the first known particle of antimatter. The scientific community reacted with astonishment and skepticism. Anderson's discovery was so groundbreaking that it shook the very foundations of physics. It suggested the existence of a mirror universe, an antimatter universe where everything is reversed. It was a concept that seemed straight out of a science fiction novel. Yet Anderson's evidence was solid. His careful documentation and the repeatability of his experiments silenced the skeptics. His discovery was so significant, it earned him the Nobel Prize in Physics just three years later in 1936. And, in the midst of cosmic rays, the first evidence of antimatter was found. With this discovery a new chapter in physics was opened, leading us down a path filled with endless possibilities and unanswered questions about the nature of our universe. Why does the universe favor matter over antimatter? This is not a trivial question and certainly not a matter of cosmic preference. It's a paradox that has puzzled scientists for decades. In our universe matter is abundant. It's in the stars, the planets and even in us. Antimatter on the other hand is scarce, almost non-existent. But here's the thing. According to the laws of physics, for every particle of matter there should be a corresponding particle of antimatter. So why is there such an imbalance? Let's dive a bit deeper. When the universe was born, in the Big Bang, matter and antimatter should have been produced in equal amounts. But if that were the case, they would have annihilated each other, leaving behind only energy. And yet, here we are, in a universe filled with matter. This is where the concept of charge parity violation comes into play. It's a fancy term that essentially means that the laws of physics aren't always mirror images of each other when it comes to matter and antimatter. This violation allows for the possibility that, under certain conditions, matter and antimatter can behave differently, leading to an excess of matter in the universe. But how does this violation occur, and why? These are questions that continue to stump scientists. 
Despite decades of research, we are still scratching the surface of this profound mystery. We've made some progress, yes, but the complete picture remains elusive. The antimatter paradox is one of those unsolved riddles that continue to push the boundaries of our understanding. It's a reminder of how much we have yet to learn about the universe and its workings, and it's a testament to the beauty and complexity of science. This imbalance, this favoritism of the universe, is one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of science. It's a puzzle that continues to intrigue and perplex, a cosmic conundrum that keeps us ever eager to unravel the secrets of the universe. But why should we care about antimatter? Well, the answer is quite simple, yet profoundly exciting. Antimatter carries an extraordinary potential that, if harnessed, could transform the way we perceive energy and matter. First off, let's talk about travel, not just any travel, but interstellar travel. Now, we're not talking about a Sunday drive to grandma's house, we're talking about voyaging to the farthest reaches of our galaxy and beyond. Conventional fuel sources simply can't provide the kind of energy required for such an ambitious journey. However, antimatter, with its immense energy output, could be the key. When matter and antimatter meet, they annihilate each other, releasing energy far more potent than any chemical reaction. Imagine this. A teaspoon of antimatter has the same energy as the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. That's the kind of power we're dealing with. Moving from the cosmos to the microscopic world, antimatter also holds promise in medical science, specifically in the treatment of cancer. Positron emission tomography, or PET scans, already use a form of antimatter called positrons to detect cancerous cells. But the future could see us using antimatter in a more direct manner, targeting and eliminating cancer cells with unparalleled precision. However, as with all great things, there are challenges. Producing antimatter is no easy task. It requires huge amounts of energy, sophisticated equipment, and a lot of patience. And even after we've managed to produce it, containing antimatter is another hurdle. Since it annihilates upon contact with matter, we need to develop a containment method that prevents it from touching anything at all. So we're looking at a future where antimatter could fuel our spaceships, help cure diseases, and revolutionize energy production. But first, we need to figure out how to make it and keep it in one place. It's a tall order. But if history has taught us anything, it's that human ingenuity knows no bounds. Antimatter, with its destructive power, holds the potential to revolutionize our world. In the quest to solve the antimatter mystery, scientists are pushing the boundaries. Let's dive into the recent advancements and findings in the field of antimatter research. The work of CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research and other leading institutions is proving to be groundbreaking. A perfect example is the Alpha experiment at CERN, where scientists for the first time have been able to examine the spectral lines of antimatter. They've done this by using a laser to observe the light spectrum of anti-hydrogen, the antimatter counterpart of the simplest atom, hydrogen. The results? Remarkably, they mirror those of hydrogen, which is a significant discovery in understanding the nature of antimatter. On another front, the base experiment at CERN has been focusing on the properties of antiprotons. The team there has measured the magnetic moment of the antiproton with a precision that's a thousand times better than before. And guess what? Just like the alpha experiment, the base findings show that the properties of protons and antiprotons are mirror images of each other. Across the Atlantic, at Fermilab in the United States, the focus is on the behavior of neutrinos and antineutrinos. Their research is aimed at understanding why we live in a matter-dominated universe, despite the apparent symmetry between matter and antimatter. Meanwhile, the Japanese-led T2K experiment is making waves with its investigation into the oscillation of neutrinos and antineutrinos. Their findings suggest a possible difference in behavior between the two, which could be a game-changer for our understanding of the matter-antimatter asymmetry. So what's the big picture here? Well, these findings are painting a tantalizing image of a universe where matter and antimatter are almost perfect mirror images of each other. But the key word here is almost. The minute differences that do exist could hold the answer to why our universe is made of matter and not antimatter. In the world of antimatter, it seems the more we learn, the more questions we have. What does the future hold for antimatter? That's the question that's been fueling countless hours of research and experimentation, and it's the question that will continue to drive us forward in our quest to understand the universe. Imagine for a moment a future where we've harnessed the power of antimatter. This might sound like the stuff of science fiction, 
but the potential is staggering. Antimatter, with its ability to annihilate matter and release energy, could offer an almost unlimited source of power. It could be the key to deep space exploration, powering spacecraft on journeys that would take us beyond our solar system. But before we get there, there are still many challenges to overcome. First and foremost, we need to figure out how to produce and store antimatter in large amounts. Today, we can create antimatter in particle accelerators, but only in minute quantities. And storing it? That's another challenge altogether, as any contact with regular matter would result in mutual annihilation. As we push forward, we'll also continue to explore the fundamental properties of antimatter. Do antimatter galaxies or even antimatter universes exist out there? Can we use antimatter to test the symmetry of nature to understand why there's more matter than antimatter in the universe? We're on the brink of a new era in physics, one that could radically transform our understanding of the universe. Every new discovery, every breakthrough peels back a layer of the unknown, revealing a bit more about the fundamental nature of our universe. And as we dig deeper, as we push the boundaries of our knowledge, we might also stumble upon new questions, new mysteries to solve. That's the beauty of scientific exploration. It's a never-ending journey, a constant pursuit of knowledge. As we continue to unravel the mysteries of antimatter, who knows what secrets we'll uncover about our universe. So what have we learned about antimatter today? Well, we've delved into the unexpected discovery of this mysterious entity, a mirror image of matter, existing in a delicate balance. We've grappled with the paradox of why our universe seems to favor matter, leaving us with the compelling question, where is all the antimatter? We've explored the potential uses of antimatter from powering spacecraft to its role in medical imaging. We've also looked into the future, pondering the exciting possibilities that could emerge as our understanding deepens. We've discussed the latest research and findings which are not only redefining our knowledge of antimatter but also reshaping our understanding of the universe itself. Whether we're talking about the smallest particles or the vastness of the cosmos, antimatter plays a crucial part. In the grand cosmic dance of matter and antimatter, we are but spectators, striving to understand the rules, 